Hello, I hope you're doing great. So, when you create software applications that are going to be widely used by a lot of users, especially applications that are going to be used around the globe, it is really, really important to understand how your system is being used by your users. And one of the ways to do that is to have, of course, things like visitor tracking, uh, like homemade visitor custom tracking, uh, something like Google Analytics too, right? And also you can create more homemade or custom implementations for logging, right? So one of the things that you can do is actually implement logging for your API requests. And that is what we are going to see today. Now, before we continue, please remember to visit fairplaytooth.pdicostarica.com, click the Buy Me a Coffee icon, and select a donation of your preference. This will help us keep the videos and products free for you. And you will also be helping funding FairPlayTube and the rest of the projects that we are creating especially for you. Okay, so now let's go to Visual Studio and let's see how we do that. Give me a second to change my screen. And okay, so you should be seeing my Visual Studio already. And here we are going to go to the database project. In the database project, you will see that here I have this application user API request, right? Uh, the login that we have in this specific part is basically API login or request of API login of API requests only for authenticated users, right? Okay, so we create the table, right? We pass the uh, primary key column. We add the column corresponding to the application user ID, which is the ID in the application user table. We pass the HTTP method, the actual path that could be changed to something like full URL or something like that, right? And then we have the auditing columns, right? The role creation daytime, the role creation user, the source application, and the originator IP address, right? So we have all of these columns, right? Then we remember that we actually use EF Core Power Tools, so we use the reverse engineer to create the uh, to quickly create the model and the DB set uh, for the entity framework portion. Now we go to the FairPlayTube project, right, which is the um, server side project. We go to the startup.cs and you will see that in here we have this log API request method, which is basically being inbuilt from the configure method, right? So log API request, we pass the application object, right? In this case, we are not using extension, so that's why we pass it as parameter, but we can always modify the refactory a little bit so it is an extension method. Uh, but it's pretty much the same thing. So we do the app use, right? Then we pass the context and the next task, right? So in here we do a try catch, right? So we get the request method from the request.method in the context. The request path is going to be context.request.path, right? And the path is actually going to be um, the segment beyond the first base address, right? So it won't have like the request path won't have like the local host or the actual domain name. It will have, uh, it will go beyond that, right? 
and then I verify if it's API. I know that all of my APIs will start with slash API. At least all my controller or API routes will be starting with slash API. So I can say that if it has that, then it is a request to an API or to an endpoint. Now we verify if the user is authenticated or authorized, right? Authenticated, sorry. Um, basically, if he, the user has just logged into the application, right? So we get the user identity that is authenticated, right? Then if it is authenticated, we use the current user provider, which is from the interface I current user provider, we get it from the required services in the context dot request services. Then we get the user object ID, which is the in this case the Azure object ID. Then we get the instance of the database context from the services too, right? Then we get the user entity. So we filter the entity by using the Azure object ID, right? And when we have the user entity, we'll, we'll have the actual application user ID, right? Then we add a new record in the application user API request table, right? So you see, this is the call, add a sync, and we create the actual entity. We pass the application user ID, which is a foreign key to the application user table. We pass the method and we pass the path. Now, this will be the full URL. I need to change the name of it. But you see this context.request.get encoded URL. This URL actually gives the full URL of the request, right? Uh, not just the path. So uh, that's to ha have it more complete. And then we save the changes. Of course, the only thing that we need the other thing that we need to do is if there is something happening or an exception happening we log it right and then after we finish everything we invoke the next right this is a function for the next task that you always need to do when you implement this kind of using right you need to um, you are getting inside of the flow of the request so you need to say that when you have finished processing some middleware for example um, you need to let the code go to the next task in the process right so that's why you have this next which is a function and you just invoke it right and that's actually the way or one of the way, one of the ways in which you can implement API request login or login for your API request in your .NET Core applications. It's really really simple, right? Now there are other things that you could do. For example, um, if your method is an HTTP post or a put, you will probably have a body so you could verify if it is one of those methods then get the actual body and insert the body as a column in that table also you can probably get the headers right and insert the headers also as a content in the table and that will allow you to easily reproduce that exact same um, api request whenever you need it. For example, uh, there are many times when in applications, in enterprise applications, that some customers say they had an error, right? They give you the error. And if you don't have a really good logging mechanism implemented, you will need to go and research a lot and try to reproduce the issue. If you do not have enough data to reproduce that issue, there are times when you will just end up waiting for the issue to happen again and try to guess and guess and guess. 
However, when you are doing this kind of login, complete login, right, where you basically have all of the information required to create or to simulate that API request through tools like Postman, um, that will help you a lot, right? Because you will have, you will be able to reproduce the exact request and you may get the, the, you, you will have more chances of get the same result that or the same error that the user had, right? Because you are actually doing the same request the user was doing at a specific moment. So it's really, really a good idea to have a login mechanism as complete and accurate as possible. I hope this video has been useful. Thank you very much and have a great day.